I'm so frustrated. Minecraft 1.20 is introducing all these new plants and everyone is losing their minds over it. Everyone except me, that is. I love plants, but when it comes to Minecraft, I'm stuck here in my 10-year-old super flat survival world with no fun plants in sight. I can't get bamboo, spore blossoms, cocoa beans, berry bushes, the list goes on and on. And now they're adding the torch flower to that list and possibly even more. And I've had enough. It's time to take matters into my own hands. Today, I'm building the greenhouse to end all greenhouses and it's gonna be filled with every plant I've ever wanted. Then we're gonna have someone from my local botanical garden review the greenhouse and let me know how I did. But the only day they're available is in exactly one week, which means I only have seven days to build this entire thing. <laughs> yeah, we better get started. First, we need to find the perfect spot for this thing. I want the greenhouse to be huge, so I'm not sure anywhere in this main city is gonna work. I think a cool spot would be beyond the mountains over there by Salacia Beach, so the first thing we need to do is create a path going up the mountain. For that, we're gonna need some moss. This little factory should give us everything we need. Next up, we need to run our cobble generator. This thing is fully automatic, and it uses efficient blasts instead of TNT duping. Now, I do have to dupe sand from the wandering trader to make the TNT, but getting all that gunpowder and then crafting it is definitely still a challenge. Okay, now that we have all this cobble and moss, we can craft up some mossy cobblestone and stone bricks and start painting this path into place. I transitioned the rough dirt path up the mountain into a more built up stone walkway that naturally winds along the custom terraforming we've done rather than cutting right through it. I added this little covered part because I'm trying to think more about sight lines when I build and I want this to frame the bottom of our greenhouse. Lastly, I added a stone walkway leading to our build site. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. All right, next we need to make some sort of platform for the greenhouse to sit on. I wanna use diorite for this, but if you haven't noticed, this is a super flat world, so we're gonna need to craft it. We've got the cobblestone, so now we just need some quartz from the piglin bartering system. Okay, hopefully this is enough. While I work on placing this platform, let me go through the three main materials for this build palette. First up is green glass, which will help the greenhouse look extra green. Second is oxidized copper, and third is warped wood. All right, our platform's done, so let's start tackling those resources. The easiest one is glass. I have a cactus farm, thanks to my friend Wandy T, so I can throw some of that in my super smelter and the dye shouldn't be an issue. But trading for the glass itself is gonna be a pain. I don't like to smelt my duped sand, so we're gonna need a lot of librarians. I've been working on giving each villager a special building in my world, like Macy's, which is the home of my mason villagers, or the Black Hat Blacksmith, where my weapon and toolsmiths live. But I've yet to build a library, so we're just gonna have to stash these guys somewhere for safekeeping. Welcome to your new home, boys. <laughs> it's, it's so nice. Okay, I just spent half the day trading, so hopefully this is gonna be enough. Next up is the copper. I built ENXO4's copper farm design on one of my end islands, so we just need to AFK for a few minutes. <laughs> my bad, a, a few hours. S sorry, a few days. Yeah, that took so long. I left my copper farm running almost around the clock, but it still took up two entire days to get it all. I literally even set alarms throughout the night so I could wake myself up and tend to the farm. I'm just hoping we'll have enough to finish the project. Now we can leave this out to oxidize and move on to the last of the three materials we need, warped wood. I still don't have any nether tree farms, and if we're gonna get enough warp wood to build this project, that needs to change like now. Since I need this fast, I modified ENXO4's versatile tree farm to get rid of the TNT duping and scaffold since, you know, we can't get bamboo. Kind of the whole reason we're doing all this. <sighs> so I quickly built up the tree farm and collected plenty of warped wood all while my copper was oxidizing in the meantime. It's actually really satisfying going around and collecting it all. Okay, so the good news is I think we have everything we need. The bad news is it's already I basically have 48 hours left to build this entire greenhouse and fill it with plants, or I let down a local plant expert and the thousands of people watching this video. No pressure, right? <laughs> and so I finally started building. I'm gonna start with these lower greenhouses here and just sort of figure out how this style is gonna look. To kick things off, I built up the entrance using copper as the base block, warped wood for the trimming and ornate details, and green glass windows as planned. Inside, I put some iron bars and chains to provide support for the structure. I'm using the fence gates on top to create those little parallel supports you see on greenhouse roofs. I think it's a really good effect. And there we go. Now I just need to build the end cap. Dude, this is looking so sick. You can already just start to see it from our main base. And this is exactly what I was talking about when I mentioned sight lines earlier. Now to copy this over to the other side. A couple years ago when I moved across the country, a bunch of my house plants couldn't fit in the car, and then even more died on the way because it was winter. But doing this build is really making me want to build up my house plant collection again. 
All right, that went much faster the second time around. I'm so happy with how this is looking, but I have to stay focused and keep going. These little guys were just the warm up. I have to build this whole big main greenhouse, starting with a domed entrance right at the top of the stairs. All right, so first we lay down this basic circle shape, but this is looking a bit plain, so now we're gonna throw down the detail and it's really gonna come to life. The entrance is like a double layer cake with a smaller dome stacked on top of a bigger one. The way the green glass filters green light into the interior is so beautiful. Once we get the plants in here, this place is really gonna be special. The view from our main base is looking so cool. I was kind of worried you weren't gonna be able to see it very well from here, so I'm really happy with this. That space underneath the greenhouse is driving me crazy, so I'm here at my dirt mines to get some packed mud. In creative mode, I put together a super simple wall segment, and then I used world edit to quickly copy paste the pattern. Then in survival mode, I'm able to use Lightmatica's easy place function to speed this whole process up significantly. Ah, oh, this looks so much better. But unfortunately, it's getting very late, and we seem to have bitten off more than we can chew. Maybe if I like pull an all nighter tomorrow, I can still make this work. <laughs> The weight of this situation is starting to sink in. The meeting is tomorrow morning, just over 24 hours from now, and we literally don't have a single plant here yet. So basically, my only choice is to play all day today and just see what I can get done. I found this list of Minecraft plants in the wiki, and there are a lot of them. So I think it'll make me feel better if we knock off a few. Azalea bushes look really nice in the garden, so that's one down at least. Man, what have I gotten myself into? I'm over at Macy's right now buying some terracotta to use in some little ponds. I think these will really enhance the nature-y feel of this build. I painted down a little swirl pattern that should add some nice color to the bottom of the ponds. After that, I filled them up with water and began adding some plants. I want to do some cattails like this, but Wandy Tea hasn't sold me brown dye in forever. So instead, I'm using pink, magenta, and purple candles to sort of be like water flowers. I don't know how realistic this is, but but it sure does look cool. I think we can knock off kelp, seagrass, lily pads, and drip leaf from the list. Now I wanna get all the crops done and I think I wanna put them in these lower two greenhouses. I really wanna try to enhance each type of crop somehow by putting some sort of big version of it. So I got real creative and started making some extra thick versions of the four main crops we know and love. And then with the extra space in the back, I made a pumpkin patch. In the other greenhouse, I kick things off by setting up an irrigation system for some sugar cane, which I enhance with some white candles on top. I also put a little barrel of sugar. I grouped up chorus fruit with the cactus in a little desert area, and I tried to knock out a few more crops as well. I'm pretty happy with how this looks so far. These XL potatoes are pretty goofy, but they're fun. I'm also really happy with this other greenhouse. There's some really fun details, like these little creeper heads as mini melons. And we've got some non-Minecraft crops like turnips, radishes, and cabbage. I feel like we just crossed off a ton of plants on the list, so I am feeling a bit better about that, but I've already been working for hours. So if I'm gonna finish the rest of the greenhouse, I'm gonna have to build faster than I ever have before. Let's just get on with this, shall we? tried my best, but that whole all-nighter idea, no, no, no. I'm not the young man I once was anymore. Honestly, I really have no idea what I'm gonna do, but that's a problem for tomorrow, Mog Swamp. Waking up Monday morning was hard, but when I rolled over to check my phone, my whole day changed. So I just got an email that says something came up and they can't do the interview until after spring break. That means I have another week to finish this project. Relief immediately washed over me and I realized how hard I've been pushing myself. I mean, the whole point of this project is to have a special place in my world to relax. Something had to change. We're here at Zilker Botanical Garden to get some inspiration from all these plants, but more importantly, just to relax a little. Look, 1.20. 
Something about the fresh air and being surrounded by plants was such a good reset for me. I really needed it. I really hope I can have a garden kind of like this someday, but until then I'll have my Minecraft greenhouse. Speaking of which, I'm feeling very inspired to get back to work. I relaxed my pace a lot and focused on finishing up the greenhouse exterior over the next couple days and I had a lot of fun with it. I dove down some crazy YouTube rabbit holes and before I knew it, the outside was finished. This is looking awesome, but we've still got the entire interior to do and a whole lot of plants to knock off the list. First, let's take care of the moss block and carpet. I want the floor to be a gradient of stone pathways that transition into moss where we're gonna put a lot of the plants. I just love how well this gradient works. There needs to be a way to get up to the second level and I noticed a lot of the greenhouses on Pinterest have these ornate white spiral staircases. So I did my best to create that look and I built it up on each side. And you can actually walk up them. All right, let's take care of even more plants. The list just says flowers, but I wanna make sure we get all of them. I'm gonna put a bunch in these gardens in front of the base with a focus on tulips. Nice, I think this pattern looks pretty good. All right, and for these ones by the staircase, I'm gonna do some enhanced tulips. <laughs> These are so cartoony, but I kind of love them. I mean, when you think about the size of the Minecraft bee, it kind of makes sense. Okay, now for the rest of the flowers. Poppies, enhance. Dandelions, enhance. Cornflower, enhance. Allium, blue orchid. Wither roses, lily of the valley. Azure, blue it. And oxide, daisy. But Mog Swamp, what about the two block tall flowers? Well, if you were paying attention in the intro, you'd know that these are unobtainable and super flat. Wandy T doesn't sell them and they don't grow in plains biomes. But that's not gonna stop me. We're gonna build our own bigger, better version, starting with the rose bush. All right, this is looking pretty cool. We've got the red glazed terracotta as the roses, the end rods as the thorns, and little candles as like little rose buds. Next up, I wanna take on the sunflowers. <laughs> these came out cool. I might even like these better than the real sunflowers in the game. Next up is lilac. And there we go. A little bit of allium and some purple slabs. And we've got this lovely vine going all the way to the tippy top up here. Last but not least is the peony. Had to go a bit abstract for these, but they kind of look like the real thing. But there's still some flowers left, although they're not really in the game yet. It's looking like I probably won't get the torch flower in super flat, so let's try to build that one. Even though it's a real flower, a lot of people have been complaining that the torch flower doesn't create smoke or any light, so I did my best to fix that. This actually came out really cool. It's like this epic jungle plant. If we ever do get torch flowers, we can always replace these ferns. And last but not least for the flowers, let's try to do those two leaked flowers from Roger Badgerman. One of them is like some blue berries on a mix with vines. <laughs> this kind of works, I guess. And this other one is almost like a jungle log slab with a plant coming out of it. Huh? This is uh, as close as we're gonna get. I'm having so much fun trying to fake some of these unobtainable items, so let's just keep going. One of the ones that hurts the most is bamboo, but I think using glass panes, fences, and candles, we can kinda get there. I mean, you gotta use your imagination a little bit, but this actually came out better than I thought. Now for two more unobtainables. Here are our cocoa beans. Eh? Not bad. And the best I can think of for dead bush is using some mangrove roots over in our desert area. And now sweet berries and spore blossoms. For the sweet berries, I'm using spruce leaves and candles as the berries. And we're gonna use candles once again to be the petals falling from the spore blossom. This might be my favorite plant we've built yet. With pretty much all the unobtainables done, I knocked a few last things off the list, so basically all that's left are the different tree types. But the wiki, I don't wanna talk about my levels, but the wiki also provided this list of plant adjacent things, so I made these little pools to cross off the coral blocks, and I even added some fake sponge to the big pool in the main room. All of the fungi is going to go in this entrance dome, and I'm gonna put them all around the statue of a mushroom deity. And I saved this room in the back for a little spot dedicated to bees. But first I need to farm some bee nests. This actually takes forever to do. I do not recommend it. Ah, oh, but it was worth it. There we go. The bee nest to composter gradient works so well, but that's all you get to see for now. I've still got a lot of empty pots to fill in and the ceilings need more vines for sure. Not to mention the bees, trees, and shrooms, which are going to make this place come alive. So I'm saving the special reveal for our final tour. And it's done. I finished this up before bed last night. I'm so nervous to show you guys and to show our guest. Speaking of which, why don't we introduce him? How's it going? My name is Matthew Gass and I'm the director of education here at Zilker Botanical Garden. 
thank you so much for joining us. You mentioned that you have a little bit of experience with Minecraft. Yeah, so I built a couple Minecraft worlds and kind of glass houses, but probably not to the scale that you might have created. <laughs> All right, Matthew, welcome to my world. This is actually a super flat world. Do you happen to know what that is? I don't know what that is, no. Time for the big reveal. Here is my greenhouse. Wow, look at that. Looks like a giant Victorian greenhouse. Oh, I'm so happy you said that. Victorian is exactly the style I'm going for. We've got some tulips over here. The four colors of tulips it gives you are white, orange, red, and pink. The plant basically has the capacity to produce a variety of different colors because of the enzymes and molecular pathways. There are certain colors that occur more frequently. So they could have included yellow. I don't know why they didn't. One thing that might be a little bit realistic is this pumpkin. I mean, pumpkins can grow huge, right? Yes, pumpkins can get massive, you can strategically remove all of the developing roots so that you only have one, and then all the sugars from the leaf are going to be going to that one pumpkin. Here we've got some sugar cane. I know that this game has bamboo and it has sugar cane. In my opinion, they should swap the blocks. Bamboo has an underground stem called a rhizome and it spreads and then it pops up all over the place. So right. bamboo would kind of look like this. Sugar cane would usually be a singular stem bunching from the base. This is sort of an imaginary plant in the game. This it's called a chorus fruit. My partner and I beat the ender dragon and then we felt successful and stopped there. But <laughs> I, I've used this fruit before. When you eat it, you actually like teleport randomly. Are there any fruits uh, that do that in real life? <laughs> Maybe a hallucinogenic fruit. I mean, if you ate some kind of... <laughs> yeah, I guess the, the cactus here, right? Uh, so up these stairs here in the first entrance dome, I've dedicated to be all about mushrooms and fungi. This definitely looks like a mushroom I've seen in real life. Probably think of the uh, Amanita. They're called toadstools. The field of mycology is relatively new. There's still lots to be learned. One of the blocks in the game, I've done my best to fake it here. It's called mycelium. It's kind of like roots. It's the organism that's spreading out in a fibrous pattern, and then it produces like the Mushroom. Their cells have multiple ways of communicating. They can move their nuclei around. Is lichen another mushroomy thing? It is not a plant. It is more of like an algae living with a fungus. <laughs> the Minecraft wiki had some plant adjacent things. One of the things it listed was kelp as its own separate thing. Kelp is defined as an algae, but if you ask someone in Victorian England if kelp was a plant, they would say yes. Same thing with mushrooms. In this game, oak trees actually drop apples but I'm assuming in real life, you'd have to have an apple tree for that. Yeah, oaks drop acorns, so. Moving along, we've got some custom birch trees. I tend to see these skinnier birch trees in real life. Birch trees aren't super long lived, so they don't get super thick. So all the small ones are pretty accurate. These are alliums. Alliums, you probably ate one in the past a week. Onions. Really? You notice the flower is just kind of like nothing is there except the little stem. That's because everything is under the soil. So these are onions and garlic and shallots. The only thing about your design is that the leaves look like grass. On your big ones, it looks like you have- Oh, kind of... so this is not accurate. We gotta get rid of this. Now it's accurate. <laughs> there, there we go. go. They added this azalea bush and then you can grow these. So is azalea classified as a bush or a tree? I would say it's more of a bush. There is not a very distinct definition of what a tree is. These in the game are called dark oak trees. When I was Googling, I was seeing some trees with these golden leaves. Think of something in Bavaria, like a dark oak forest. I think they're just going for, oh, there's a lot of oaks out there. This one has darker wood. This is a mangrove tree, a relatively Ooh. recent addition to the game. They have these propagules that that fall right off the leaves into the mud down here and become wow. new mangrove trees. Yes, I didn't know they had this one in the game. That's amazing. The seeds basically germinate on the tree and that's called vivipary. It's like a baby kangaroo of, huh? of plants, of the plant world. <laughs> I reconstructed a couple of these stone lanterns that I was seeing all around Zilker. Yeah, at Zilker Botanical Garden, we have 12 different toro. There's kind of like five different elements, earth in the bottom, water, and then you have the firebox, which is fire, and then you have air and then spirit on top. You've made a really nice one here. Over here, we've got Ooh. ourselves a nice big Mario style piranha plant. So this type of plant has a bear trap. They don't get super big. And then you have the victory bell and the penthes. Those cups can get huge. This isn't really plants, but we've got a whole bee room. So at Zilker Botanical Garden, we do uh, provide habitat for the bees. We have a lot of native bees that are called sweat bees. You have an area that is kind of unmaintained. That is great habitat. Right here, we've got our jungle trees. I've built some trees that aren't actually in the game, um, some big palm trees here. This is my best try at an acacia. 
in all the reference images, they seem to have branches that sort of all meet at like one flat top. Acacia, like the one you've described, has a spreading form to create like a canopy. There's even research showing that people enjoy the look of spreading trees. It's like shelter, it's shade. Mm. Are there any other examples? Baobab is a monkey pot tree. There's Italian stone pine, literally a pine tree, but it grows up and spreads. These are my spruce trees back here. And then there's these sweet berries. Do you have any idea what they're trying to emulate with those sweet berries? I've thought about this because when I play Minecraft, sweet berries are my favorite. I think of kind of the Ikea berries they put with your Oh, people. the lingonberries, yeah. yeah. This is an upcoming tree. These are cherry blossom trees. I don't even know if they're referring to one specific type of tree. Cherries, apricots, and peaches are all in the same genus. We can't grow cherry trees, but we want to, so we grow peaches. That's a prunus persica. That's a peach tree, but it doesn't really produce fruits. Texas version of a cherry blossom. These are called wither roses. I've done my best to create a giant version of it. What I mainly took inspiration from, I believe it's called a corpse flower. Yeah. So that's it's called a Raphelsia. It is pollinated by things that like rotting things. Flies? Flies and maybe beetles. That would basically be our whole tour of this Victorian glass house. Well done. It looks fantastic. Botanical gardens are a great place for education, research, and just enjoying the natural world around you. And if you're in the Austin area, come to Zilker Botanical Garden. That's where I am. So yeah, you can donate. That would help us tremendously so we can educate more folks and, and keep our garden flourishing. Or you could also donate and support your local botanical garden in your area if you would like to. Thanks again for being here and have a great rest of your day, Matthew. All right, thanks for having me. It's been a while since I put out a video and it's because recently I went through a move and although it's a major life upgrade for me, it's still very difficult and stressful to pack away your entire life and start over somewhere new. But for almost 11 years, this Minecraft world has been a constant in my life. Life can be chaotic and unpredictable, but this world is always here for me. And here in this garden, I can find peace and comfort whenever life gets stressful in the future. And if life ever gets stressful for you too, I hope you join me here for a deep breath. Thanks for watching.